Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And also keep in mind, these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we have Market Close on Monday. December 27th, we're going to take a look at Palantir. I do cover Palantir every single Monday, so if you uh, enjoy this video and you enjoy things about Palantir, feel free to, to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you get those. And uh, let's jump right in. So this is a chart that we've had for quite some time, as you can see, where some of these price <laughs> zones are situated. Um, but most importantly for the time being, in, in my mind, uh, a few factors. So this downtrend that was established mid-November that had been keeping sort of the price suppressed underneath it, that was consolidated out of um, about a week and a half or so ago and, um, and has continued to consolidate its way out of there and continue to bounce from this purple zone that we had put in on, you know, whenever we put this in, several videos ago. Um, and then right now it's starting to interact nicely with this level here, resistance level here that we have put in 1892. And so, you know, watching it sort of wrestle with that, which it's been doing for the last four candles, um, and really wrestling with that for the last, say, seven out of eight candles, or maybe even eight, nine out of 10 candles. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's it's nice to see that it's sort of sticking itself to there and, and continuing to push on that zone. Uh, it does have another really tight in resistance level, as, as far as I can tell, at 1930 here, as you can see. And so that's, I think, playing uh, a a big role in this too. When those price levels, those resistance or, or support levels, whichever they are, end up to be pretty close in together like, like these are, I kind of look at them like a band, a band of support or a band of resistance. And um, it's sort of like it hasn't really burst through the 1892 until it also just kind of overtakes the 1930. And that's how, how I sort of look at those like bands. I just kind of couple them together and say, okay, these are going to kind of act as one really strong thing. Um, good thing is if it's able to continue to push against it and flip it from resistance to support, then it should act as very strong support as well, which at, at this point, um, Palantir could really, really use given the, the challenges that it's had keeping any sort of like bullish momentum going um, and, and having its support levels hold up, you know, as, as, as we can see here on the chart. Um, so next things that I'm looking for are one for, for it to sort of look to flip those. Um, and if it can't, I'd look for probably a pretty hard rejection off of those down back into this purple box and see if that purple box can continue to hold or not. But if it can flip it, um, I would give it a few days, maybe even a few weeks, and then look to see if it's able to develop a an trend line supports, an uptrend support uh, line that, that we, we could sort of like use as maybe the lower bound of a channel or just as a trend line to help follow as it maybe starts to interact with these higher levels of, of resistance uh, to the upside. Um, and we might come in and, and look at some additional levels, like there's going to be one here right around like $20, 20 21 or so, um, and, and that'll probably sit between the 2119 level and this 1930 level that we have. So we can get a little bit, bit more granular, but I mean, if I had all of these price points in, probably just about on the dollar um, all the way up, it would make this already relatively cluttered chart look even more cluttered. So <laughs> I've been a little reluctant to do that. Now if we pull in um, some of the levels here for, for some of the uh, other indicators and whatnot. The EMAs, it's, it's, you see it continually continuing to kind of reject off of this 12 EMA, which it has done on the way down, right? You see here, you see here, it's continuing to do that, but it's putting up a, a better fight at the moment, I would say, in terms of like, it's not rejecting right off of it, it's kind of sticking itself to it. And that's what I tend to call wrestling, right? It's wrestling with that EMA, trying to navigate its way and situate itself above the 12 EMA, which then could give it some sort of like scooping power, um, scooping potential. 
to help move that price action toward this 2040, which is about what we were just talking about, like that mid, that $20 and, and mid change um, level uh, as its next level of resistance. So these EMAs might actually prove to provide some, some solid resistance um, for these interim levels as we go through, but you know, we'll see how that evolves over time. Uh, another one sort of fitting that criteria, this 180 MA situated, um, you know, slightly higher than, but about will we'll likely be toward the middle of by the time it gets there um, between this 2119 and 2445. Now this is all presupposing that, that we're headed upward. Like I said, um, the downward motion to my mind is a strong rejection off of these levels because it's continued to, to not be able to, to work itself through them. And strong rejection, to my mind, probably puts us down back in this purple box and we'll have to see what it does at that point. Um, so just don't lose sight of, you know, just now that I'm talking about what would happen if we were to move up does not mean that I'm I'm assuming that or guaranteeing that we are moving up. There's, of course, the downside risk. Um, but that's what I'd look for to the upside now on the uh, MACD. So we haven't looked at these for a while. Now, right about when this started to kind of um, stabilize along this line, we did get also a MACD crossover and a little bit of a head fake here, um, you know, threatened to throw a bearish crossover again, but it's situated well below the baseline. So it has plenty of room to run to the upside if it wants to, if it's able to. And um, so I had to see how that plays out. Uh, but like I said, it's sort of like stagnating at the moment. Um, so I'm interested to see sort of like if and when it's able to get its next bit of oomph. Um, and <laughs> RSI sort of putting a, a, a big exclamation point on that uh, sort of uh, oh, sorry, the RSI disappeared here. This is a glitch on the Weeble app, but it's sort of putting an exclamation point on that kind of being stuck in the price action, right? It's just flatlining at the moment. Um, what I'd really be looking to see what it does uh, of interest to me would be what it does at this 50 level, this mid point of the RSI, midpoint between the 30 and the 70 to see if it sort of is able to, to run through that level pretty solidly or if it rejects hard off of there. Um, and you know, to, to me, that's always been the most important piece of the RSI. Does it rise up briefly and then rejects off the mid range and then come back down toward oversold and vice versa on the, on the overbought side of things. Um, but that to me is, is what I'd be looking for on the RSI. Now, Ichimoku cloud, um, got some pretty thick resistance, like all along here. Now, what I would say is if it's able to make a run toward the 20s sooner than later, it'll do itself some favors by getting at least some slightly less um, strong resistance. The thicker the cloud, the stronger the resistance. That's the idea. And as you see, if it lets itself stretch in the in the teens through like mid to late January, it's going to start encountering some pretty strong resistance there um, through the rest of January, like right at that level. And um, and a lot, you know, like two, three dollars uh, in 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 the cloud. So that's a pretty hefty percentage uh, change just to get get itself through the cloud. So let's we'll see what it does. I mean, we do see this conversion and baseline are coming in toward each other a bit. So if those cross over, that could be throwing what would be considered a weak buy signal. Weak because the price action is situated below the cloud, but a buy signal because the conversion line is crossing over the baseline. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it, it's sort of what you would expect in a chart that has had this level of drawdown and this quickly and is just trying to sort of like reverse its trend essentially, right? Reversing trend is, is nothing to be taken lightly. Uh, it's pretty challenging to do and especially to like reverse trend in a way that's going to, to stick, right? It's going to make that work um, over the long run. Now, pretty good price action today, even though, you know, it came down and I just, the, the reason I say it's pretty good price action today, you know, it was a relatively flat day. It was doing all the logical things, right? It came up within five cents of this 1930 level, rejected off of it, came down and was able to catch support right at this 1892 level. And so it's, at least it's moving in ways that make sense and are, are sort of like hitting resistance and support where we'd expect it to. And then what you look for it to develop over time is just the repetition allows it to either strongly reject hard off of a region and say, 
there is no buying p power there, or go through that, that region and say, okay, all the selling pressure that it's seen around 1930 has now been consumed and the sellers just aren't there anymore. Um, and so the price action is able to continue, you know, through that area. But what it takes, you know, over a period of time, and like I said, especially to reverse trend, is it just takes repetition of these areas. You see here it once, twice, and then it broke through, and then it had a poor catalyst, and then it drove it down, but it really quickly tried to make an attempt at that level again, right, this topping out level. Um, and then when it rejected up there, then we have this <laughs> big, big sell-off. Um, but now we sort of like have a... a double bottom region. That's why I put that purple box in there. And so you sort of see the same thing on the other end of the spectrum too, right? It's sort of like where buyers had previously shown up, they continue to show up again. And so that is a good sign. Um, it at least puts you in a solid like risk to reward uh, scenario where you're buying close in to the risk and um, gives you more opportunity to, re to reward as opposed to just taking on a bunch of risk if you're buying toward this previous topping out area. Um, all right, folks. Well, that is the chart as I see it for Palantir. Um, I hope that your week got off to a good start and that you're able to finish the year off strong, not just the week off strong ahead. And as always, I appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next video.